morning, my name is Josh from Cyclone Source and this is your detailed weather forecast update nationwide for Wednesday the 21st of January 2026. We've got plenty to talk about today including the tropical situation over into the Coral Sea, a potential cyclone for Western Australia and just a general look at our long range outlook across the next couple of weeks across Northern Australia because it is an interesting one. But first I would like to start things off with a look at the severe thunderstorm situation over in southeastern Queensland and also pockets of central and western Queensland. So if you are brand new to my channel please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video but let's get stuck straight into things for your Wednesday morning. As you can see a couple of thunderstorms already kicking things off out here around the Charleville and the Kanamala area. You can see nothing too crazy out here by the looks of things in this pocket of uh, central Queensland getting itself going this morning. We do have still a couple of thunderstorms out here and they're expected to persist throughout the remainder of the morning. A strong thunderstorm up here around Mount Isa uh, and that's been blowing along for the last couple of hours. In fact tracking up uh, north of Cloncurry and Julia Creek up to about three rivers and that's moving over into the north and the Flinders River catchment, but there is no rain threat from that. Even though it is dumping some heavy rainfall, it's not going to exacerbate the flooding situation up there. Enough about what's going on right now. Let's talk about what's going to be happening throughout the remainder of today. Well, a couple of thunderstorms expected to be here, there, and everywhere through central Queensland. This will move out towards southwestern Queensland around the Quilpie, Attervale, and Charleville area. We'll also likely see a couple of thunderstorms into the Isaac and the Fitzroy catchment as well towards the north of Roma and inland from Rockhampton. A couple of thunderstorms later tonight into early tomorrow morning in a similar fashion to what's going on around Charleville but a little bit further off towards the east tomorrow likely between uh, Warwick and uh, Toowoomba out to about I would say the Dolby area or Kogan out here Chinchilla Mooney those sort of areas here maybe a couple of thunderstorms through here maybe a thunderstorm or two into the scenic room as well into the late morning and early afternoon hours through Brisbane there is going to be enough instability for a few thunderstorms to get themselves going but nothing severe nothing too crazy expected tomorrow afternoon into the Brisbane area the proper thunderstorms are going to be further inland. Now keep in mind today, tomorrow and Friday out towards inland Queensland, these are going to be dumper thunderstorms. So a very low wind shear environment, very high cape environment. And we talked about this in yesterday's forecast stuff there, but I'll touch on it just again. Looking at some of this convective available potential energy that is available for these thunderstorms here, particularly through the uh, development hours of these thunderstorms, 3000 plus. That's really decent numbers here for southwestern Queensland. So you can bet your bottom dollar that there's very uh, substantial humidity and some substantial temperatures ongoing out here in towards this part of Queensland and that is what's going to get these thunderstorms off the ground and whilst they're not going to be significant or high and severe we will still likely see some damaging wind gusts and heavy to locally intense rainfall plus the fact that these thunderstorms are going to be slow moving if we get a convective sounding here and have a look at the environment you can see it is a relatively moist environment keep in mind that this is desert conditions we're talking about a look at the wind uh, observations here the wind barbs there is just no wind at all until you get into the upper levels here which will make these thunderstorms look pretty uh, impressive in the terms of these are just going to blow up like chimneys but uh, for the most part these thunderstorms are not going to be that organized in nature and as quick as they develop they're going to collapse in on themselves and this doesn't go just for southwestern Queensland this is everywhere that we're talking about in Queensland for the next couple of days including Brisbane as we head out and towards the weekend you can see convective available potential energy a key component for thunderstorm development building up through Friday and then into Sunday you can see these numbers here getting up into the thousands and getting close to 2,000 for a few places uh, especially on Sunday there's going to be some high cape particularly into the northeast of New South Wales and we may be seeing some decent thunderstorm activity in towards New South Wales you can see on the forecast models here we do get you know a couple of these uh, little areas which can be indicative signals of some strong thunderstorm activity but the word for Sunday is going to be isolated we're going to be talking about very hit or miss thunderstorm activity but particularly in towards New South Wales the stuff that can get itself going because it is going to be in a somewhat favorable environment could get quite strong we'll also likely see some widespread thunderstorm activity into the Wyvernhoe outlook and also through the South the net forecast district we may also see some decent thunderstorms out around the Brisbane and the Ipswich area and then especially towards the scenic rim and the Gold Coast hinterland through Sunday we'll also likely see a couple of thunderstorms here spreading up into the uh, ranges adjacent to the Capricornia coastline and as that surface trough also develops out here and towards southern Queensland here or southwestern Queensland Windora running through Charleville across towards Roma and then connecting up to the coastal thunderstorms that are being fueled by moisture coming in from the Pacific we'll also see a couple of sporadic thunderstorms out and towards western and southwestern Queensland Queensland, so that will be interesting as well. Sunday, going to be the pick of the days for southeastern Queensland for thunderstorm risk in terms of the strongest and most severe potential. It's going to be today and tomorrow and towards central Queensland. We're really not expecting gnarly stuff through southeast Queensland this weekend. Whilst a couple of thunderstorms are possible, again, nothing crazy is kind of on the cards at this point in time. Chances continue through Monday and with heat really expected to build across southeast Queensland, you can see these numbers start to get pretty ridiculous here on the convective available potential energy side of things. I'm a little bit concerned with 
with Monday because we do have this southeasterly change coming through. So this may produce a high end outbreak. When we see triggers like this, this really does raise some alarm bells. And considering that this is a very similar forecast to what we saw on Monday, the 24th of November last year, uh, this is definitely going to be a day to watch now, I believe. But I think the saving grace or one of the saving graces here is the fact that we're going to have bugger or wind shear in the atmosphere. If we have a look at our 400 HPA winds here, uh, wind shear numbers between 10 to 20 knots, it's just not enough to get these high end severe thunderstorms off the ground. If this does change though, we will be talking about a bit more of a moderate or even high end severe thunderstorm outbreak. But at this point in time, whilst conditions look very favorable into the lower levels of the atmosphere on uh, Monday for severe thunderstorm potential, there's not going to be enough wind shear. So that is just going to be that one thing that holds these thunderstorms back. Otherwise, Monday is one of the most crack of setups you can imagine if wind shear was available for these thunderstorms to make the most of. So let's just uh, cross our fingers that that doesn't change, but it's not likely to because of that ridging pattern out into the Tasman Sea. Um, but yeah, definitely an interesting factor. And that's what I like to do in these videos is go through everything and look at everything and, you know, really hash out all of the details of why things are not going on and uh, going to happen and why things may actually happen. So that's what we do in this channel. And if you do enjoy that sort of content, then please do consider subscribing. Now, panning out towards the Coral Sea, it's a pretty busy picture this morning. We've got an area of low pressure down here moving over Norfolk Island right now. In fact, if we turn on the wind observations, it has been pretty blowy down there, uh, gusting up into the 80s, even the 90s earlier today at the Norfolk Island Airport. Winds sustain around the 40 kilometer an hour mark. And you can see some strong winds also beginning to push in towards the North Island of New Zealand. Now, Norfolk Island is now expecting things to calm down because as the system races off towards the Southeast, the backside of the system is actually pretty weak in comparison. It's just the front end of this storm system that's actually got a bit of a punch. But yeah, no chance this becomes a tropical cyclone. Now it's racing off into the mid latitudes and as such, it isn't expected to become anything. We've got an area of low pressure associated with the monsoon trough out here. This is not expected to become anything, even though it looks rather impressive, all things considered. And that monsoon continuing to pump here across northern uh, Queensland and northern Australia. And as a result, we may be looking at a weak area of low pressure developing as we head out towards the weekend. There's already a weak area of low pressure developing out here. And this is tropical low 16U. It doesn't look like it's got a good chance of development right now, just because this system has really struggled to gain convection and gain some of that thunderstorm activity that it really needs to get hold of for tropical cyclone development. But you can see if it can get itself rolling in the next couple of days, we may be looking at a tropical low developing here. There's also likely to be another area of low pressure developing adjacent to the Cape York Peninsula. And it looks like this is just going to be one really sloppy and broad monsoonal system. And that's sort of what we've been talking about over the last couple of days. Whilst it's not necessarily going to be huge like tropical cyclone Koji was when uh, Koji was in development, I'm just expecting some very broad sloppy monsoonal mess to develop through the weekend period uh, as this kind of low pressure system here, which is 16U wraps around on the southern side of the more broader low pressure system up here, which hasn't been tagged yet by the Bureau of Meteorology, but I feel will be tagged at some point during today, likely to pick up the designation of tropical low 18U because that is the next one on the list. But it looks like this will have some kind of Fujiwara interaction, which is where these systems merge and become one. And it looks like that's likely to happen sometime through the weekend and then through early next week, we may actually see the development of a fully fledged tropical low or even a tropical cyclone. Just put it this way, this is going to be a very messy forecast. Things are going to continue to change, but right now the picture remaining or the bigger picture, the broader details remaining pretty much set in stone. A broad, messy tropical low pressure system likely to meander around in the northern Coral Sea before getting absorbed up by another area of low pressure developing towards its north. And that's likely to create just an absolute mess of showers and thunderstorm activity through here adjacent to the Queensland coastline. But again, as we have been talking about, no threat to Queensland at all at this point in time. It looks like a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity across parts of northern and far northern Queensland through next week. But we're looking a little bit too far out into the future to be able to tell for sure at this point in time. And you know that I'm going to mention it, that high pressure ridge that we are expecting down here and towards southeastern Queensland or adjacent to the southeast Queensland coast. It looks like that has strengthened a little bit in the latest forecast modeling. And as such, it looks like this system here is going to be pushed back in towards the Queensland coastline. This is not a factor to be concerned about right now. It would be if this was becoming a tropical cyclone, but considering it is expected to interact with another area of low pressure, and you'd think when you've got a combined, or sometimes you'd think if you've got two low pressure systems coming together, that the uh, strength would be added, like you'd be doing simple addition to the strength. That's not really the case. Generally speaking, when you've got low pressure systems interacting with each other, unless it's, unless one is far stronger than the other, it's generally a net negative for both systems. And as such, they'll really take their time to develop and mature. And it's generally bad news for a weather system here, particularly when they're so close to land. So this is just not a good forecast ahead of this storm system here. It really does not have a good start to life. And both of these tropical lows are really going to struggle as a result. 
um, even though one is more likely to be uh, dominant, and that being the one that is developing right now, tropical low 16U, that is more like uh, 17U rather, that is more likely to be the de uh, dominant one here for the North Queensland coastline. Interesting stuff, interesting times, that's for sure, but that is the tropics. No serious impacts expected, about it, minus a couple of showers and maybe some gusty winds across far north and northern Queensland. So I would not be worrying or preparing or panicking about this system at all. Just keep your eye on the radar imagery, keep your eye on the forecast, and if things do change, you bet I will be the first to let you. You know, but again, no risk, no threat at this point in time, at no point in losing sleep over these systems. Um, in terms of the long range forecast of the Coral Sea, and we'll talk about this in a bit more detail later this afternoon and this evening in our tropical update, but we are starting to see some signals of potentially a strong tropical cyclone in the making out here. The AI forecast models are pretty consistently now calling for something to develop into the Solomon Sea and to track towards the Queensland coastline. This may be a feature to be uh, looking at quite closely in the next couple of days, but I want to see the numerical models pick up on it. This is kind of a longer range signal between about February 2nd out to about February 8th or 9th, so not really something that we should be worrying about right now, but definitely a feature that we should be watching. And it kind of lines up with our long range forecast, which was suggesting early February to have a little bit of action in it for the Queensland coastline, at least in a tropical cyclone based nature. So this will be a bit of an interesting place to watch, I reckon, over the next couple of days. And I'll have all the details in this afternoon's tropical update. And keeping things tropical, let's talk about tropical low 16U out here into the waters of Western Australia. It is now beginning to redevelop out here with a new area of low pressure developing uh, towards the south of Bali, basically, or towards the southeast of Bali and the southwest of Timor. It is expected to make that turn towards the southeast and then move in towards the Kimberley coastline of Western Australia later this week into this weekend. And considering it has done that centre relocation as we picked up yesterday morning, it looks like that this system here may actually come ashore as a tropical cyclone now. It's got ample time and ample conditions considering wind shear is now really beginning to drop off of this system. And it looks like by tomorrow night into Friday morning, we are actually going to see a fully fledged tropical low develop and then pretty quickly afterwards a tropical cyclone developing. Uh, models are starting to come to a consensus that a landfall or a coastal crossing is going to occur sometime Friday night into Saturday morning. Uh, and I believe that that is a pretty accurate timestamp considering all four major forecast models right now are sort of calling for the same thing late Friday night into Saturday morning, potentially as late as Saturday afternoon, depending on where the system does come ashore. But, but also all major forecast models are now starting to trend up in terms of the intensity potential here for this tropical cyclone. The icon especially now calling for a category one potentially even a weak category two strength tropical cyclone coming ashore here with wind gusts approaching 125 kilometers an hour. So this will be a place to watch. The Kimberley coastline definitely should take note of this. And I do believe that people between Derby up towards Columbaroo, as I've been saying for the last couple of days, should be monitoring this situation quite closely. And if we do see a tropical cyclone warning raised, then make sure you are ready to prepare for a category one, potentially even a category two strength tropical cyclone impact. I don't think this is ever going to be a problem for Broom. I don't think it's going to be a problem for Wyndham or Kananara even Columbaroo or even Derby for that matter. I believe that all of those locations are just too protected or too far away from the storm center of circulation when it does cross the coast for that to be a concern. And as such, I don't recommend preparations or panicking in those areas at this point in time. But for the locations uh, sort of along the exposed coastline, mostly just indigenous communities here in this outline, I would say watch this situation quite closely. Things can and probably will change over the next couple of days. And considering that this system has found itself in a bit more of a favorable environment this morning, it's definitely a feature that is worth watching right now. So we will be keeping close tabs on that. And just before I wrap this video up, I would like to briefly touch on Western Australia. Not only did we have a spectacular aurora, I'll show you some photos in just a second, but we do have some warm temperatures as well. 49.2 degrees yesterday at Shark Bay Airport up here, uh, just outside of Denham. That's one of the hottest days that they've picked up on record. In fact, I believe it was a record for January in terms of the heat standpoint here at uh, Shark Bay uh, Airport or Denham. Uh, very, very warm indeed. Multiple other locations got between 48 and 50 degrees up here and towards the Gascoigne and the Pilbara region of WA. It was an absolute scorch yesterday. A little bit cooler, but still very warm in Perth, 41 degrees uh, and a beautiful night last night. It was 32 out in the wheat belt when I was looking at that, at that aurora and you could see it with the naked eye. It was absolutely spectacular. On the screen right now, a few of my favorite photos. It, the colors were incredible. And again, to be able to see it with the naked eye in Western Australia was amazing. And I remember uh, telling Tom from West WX Watches, who was out there with me, uh, and we were thinking, 
Isn't it uh, just crazy how, you know, the aurora, the southern lights associated with Antarctica or the North Pole, uh, Greenland, uh, for example, uh, and where it's snow covered year round, where you've got those temperatures between minus 10 down to about minus 50 or minus 60 degrees in winter. And we're sitting there looking at an aurora, uh, 32 degrees with an easterly blow on about 50 k's an hour, a hot easterly as well. Uh, it just felt so out of place, but it was a really, really, really special night. And that aurora was absolutely spectacular. Um, if you've set, got photos as well send them in to me i'd love to have a look at them but yeah a lot of people in southern australia we had a report to the aurora being seen as far uh, north as serena just south of Mackay uh, in central queensland uh, lots of reports through south australia basically anyone towards the south of this line here had a chance of seeing that aurora and it was absolutely spectacular the further south and the further darker uh, you got uh, with those night skies so very very happy to see that one come off and much more spectacular than november 12th 2025 which was in itself a pretty special night as well that is going to do it though for me today in this forecast update if you have enjoyed it then please you consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already the support is massively appreciated uh, and if you too want to get your name mentioned at this part of the video update as well as the channel sponsors which are on screen right now then click the join button down below go check me out over on facebook and i'll catch you on the next storm goodbye